Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today, as uh, some last minute Amy prep, let's do problem uh, 13 from the 2018 Amy 1. So, this year's Amy 1. So, let's first take a look at the problem. Let ABC be have side lengths of AB equals 30, BC equals 32, and AC equals 34. Point X lies in the interior of BC, and points I1 and I2 are the in centers of ABX and ACX, respectively. Find the minimum possible area of A, I, 1, I, 2 as X varies along BC. So first off, this is a geometry problem, so of course we have to first draw a diagram. So let's, okay, let's not choose that for now. Okay, so let's draw um, the two circles. Let's see, there we go, good enough. And this is a I one, and this is a I two. So we have this little thing going on, like this. Okay. So um, we want to find the minimum possible value of the area of triangle A I one I two as X varies along BC. So, in order to find the minimum value of the area of AI1, I2, we have to first figure out how to find the area of AI1, I2. And once we find the area in terms of something, then perhaps it will be easy enough to find the minimum, and then we'd be done. So, first we've got to find the area of AI1, I2. So, how might we find the area? Well, there's a few ideas for finding the area of a triangle. Um, one idea is you could use base times height. So for example, if you took the height here and then multiplied by the base I1, I2, then divided by two, then you'd find the area. However, if you think about it, not only is the height hard to find, but I1, I2 itself is already pretty hard to find because they are connecting the centers of these two um, in circles and the in circles themselves don't have any significantly nice properties um, with respect to each other since like they're not tangent or anything like that well most of the time so um, perhaps finding the area using I1, I2 and the height is probably a bad idea so we have to think of another way to find the area well let's see we using Huron's formula we still have to find I1, I2 which is not good so let's see what else can we use well we can use um, one half AB sine C because that also finds the area of the triangle and it also avoids one of the sides. In particular, we want to avoid I1, I2 because it's kind of hard to um, calculate that distance. So um, instead of let's do the area of A, I1, I2 as A, I1, I2 is going to equal one half A, I1 times A, I2 times the sine of angle I1 A I2 and in particular this um, area definition is especially nice for us we think because what's the angle I1 A I2 well since I1 is the in center then that means this angle is bisected and since I2 is the in center then that means that this angle is bisected so we notice that the angle I1 A I2 is actually just half the angle BAC. So angle I1 A I2 is just one half of angle A. So now we basically know sine of I1 A I2. So all we need to do now is to um, find the minimum possible value of A I1 times A I2. Now AI1 and AI2 unfortunately aren't that nice either. However, they are nice enough in that um, they, they are a pretty basic length that comes with um, when you have an in center in any case. Because, uh, or in particular, maybe we can find AI1 in terms of some things that we know. And if we think about it, since the triangle ABC is fixed at 30, 32, and 34 um, as the side lengths, 
respectively. Then uh, um, basically angle A is fixed, so that means this won't change. One half is fixed, so that means of course that won't change. And if we can represent AI1 and AI2 as something fixed plus maybe an extra variable, for example, where X is, then we can just solve for the minimum possible area of AI1, I2 with a single, um, a one variable expression. So our goal here is to express AI1 and AI2 as in terms of some fixed uh, constants as well as maybe where X is. So how might we do that? So the thing with working with lengths, for example, um, we could do AI1 is equal to perhaps, um, uh, let's see, we could have, uh, if this was uh, like D or something, I don't know, we could have like AI1 is equal to um, AD divided by cosine of whatever this ang angle is, like alpha or something like that. Except for the thing is, in order to find AD, well, AD is equal to um, it's going to be equal to AB plus AX minus BX all divided by 2. And the thing with any sort of expression with BX, AX, and CX is that we don't know what BX, AX, and CX are. We only know that we can relate them um, somehow. In particular, we could relate them with Stewart's theorem, except for the, th the expression for Stewart's theorem is pretty complicated. So we probably don't want to go down this path of using lengths. Because, again, there's a lot of lengths that we don't know. And in order to represent all those lengths using one variable, well, it's going to be extremely messy. Maybe even with like square roots or something, because you have to perhaps solve a quadratic or something like that. So using lengths is probably not a good idea. But, of course, we have to use some lengths, because AI1 is, and AI2 are, is of, are, of course, lengths. But So we probably want to um, try to use only nice lengths. And in this case, nice, nice lengths are going to be, for example, AB or say AC or BC because those are fixed. So how might one relate um, these lengths to AB or AI1 and AI2 to AB, BC or AC? Well, let's consider drawing this line right here and look at the triangle ABI1. So in this triangle, we have a length AB. We also have a length AI1, so we can use law of sines to relate them. So hopefully, cross our fingers, that um, we don't have to work with any angles that we don't know and are hard to find as well, because that would create the same problem, but with the angles instead. So let's take a look at what happens here. By law of sines, we get the AI1 divided by sine of... Well, since I1, again, is the in-center, then BI1 bisects angle ABX, so that means um, this angle right here is B over 2. So sine of B over 2 is equal to AB, which again is fixed, that's nice, over sine of angle AI1B. Now, what is AI1B? Well, we can do a little bit of angle chasing here, because... If we have the triangle ABC, then if this angle C, then that means the sum of these two angles are going to be 180 minus C. So that means the sum of these two angles is going to be half of that, which is 90 minus C over 2. Since the sum of those two angles is 90 minus C over 2, it follows that this angle right here is going to be 180 minus the quantity 90 minus C over 2, which is just going to be equal to 90 plus C over 2. So um, sine of angle AI1B is actually equal to sine of 90 plus angle AXB over 2. So let's take a look. AB over sine of 90 plus angle AXB over 2. Okay, and actually, what does sine of 90 plus angle AXB over 2 equal? Well, that actually just equals cosine of 
So cosine of angle AXB over 2. All right. So um, that's all nice and done. So we can take a look at AI2 now. And indeed, AI2 is going to be almost the exact same calculation. So let's just mirror that calculation to get that AI2 over sine of angle B uh, angle C over 2 is going to equal AC over cosine of angle AXC over 2, like so. OK, so that means that AI1 is equal to sine of B over two, uh, angle B over 2 times AB over cosine of angle AXB over 2, and uh, AI2 is going to be equal to sine of angle C over 2 times AC over cosine of angle AXC over 2. And in particular, A, B, A, C, sine C over 2, and sine of B over 2 are all constants. So in order to maximize or minimize um, the product A, I, 1, A, I, 2, all we need to do is minimize, want to min minimize, oops, 1 over um, cosine of angle AXB over 2 times cosine of angle AXC over 2. And now the nice thing that we notice is that angle AXB plus angle AXC is equal to 180 degrees. So actually, 1 over cosine AXB over 2 times cosine of angle AXC over 2, since AXB over 2 and AXC over 2 sum to 90 degrees, is just going to be equal to 1 over sine of angle AXC over 2 cosine of angle AXC over 2. And what does this equal? This just equals 1 over 1 half times sine of angle AXC over 2. And we want to minimize this. In, order, in other words, we want to maximize 1 half sine angle AXC and we know that um, sine is maximized when it equals 1 and angle AXC equals 90. So that just tells us that um, the area of the triangle, A, I1, I2, is maximized when AX is the altitude of triangle ABC. So now that we know that it is maximized at the altitude, all we need to do now is to plug in everything back into this expression, 1 half A, I1, A, I2 because everything that we set as fixed, we can actually calculate. And uh, since there is quite a bit of calculation, I'm just going to leave that as an exercise to the viewer. Um, you can go ahead and try to calculate the area A I1, I2, given that AX is the altitude of triangle, AX, uh, of triangle ABC. So um, that's all I'm going to cover for today. So hope you liked it, and see you in the next video. Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and since the AMC A and B are over, it's time to start some Amy prep. And for today, I'm actually going to do an AMC 12 problem as Amy prep.